you know, historically, it's like if you could do something with a paintbrush, that could be valued at millions of dollars. $400 million is the bid, so. But if you could do something with a computer, nobody really gives a shit. And it's sort of like interesting to me, like it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. What if it switched? Oh my God. The piece is called Every Days, the first 5,000 days, and is the work of an artist better known as Beeple, now the third most valuable living artist in the world. Oh my fucking God. Is it the fucking third? Dude, what the fuck? I really wanted it to be the first. No, I'm kidding. Talk about NFT. My favorite new topic. I'm so obsessed too. I'm spending a ton of time on this. As of this morning, with this sale, it is an asset class, and Beeple is turning out to be the king. So we're really excited to be here with you. Let me ask you, how would you describe yourself? Sure, my name is Mike Winkleman, uh, AKA Beeple. I am a digital artist from Charleston, South Carolina. I am best known for the Everydays, which is a picture I've been doing every single day for the last 5,000 plus days. In addition to that, I do creative commons like concert visuals, short films, and a bunch of other weird shit. So I got the name Beeple actually from this Ewok looking thing from the 80s that sort of reacts to uh, light and sound. That sort of interplay between light and sound um, was a big focus in the, the early work that I did. When did you start to create art? Like how old were you when you started to create art? I mean, I guess I was creating art quite young. I always really liked drawing. That was definitely something that I was always, you know, was a great pastime and something that I really, you know, enjoyed doing. You know, I, I very much feel like getting a computer and seeing the possibilities there was just uh, such a huge mind expanding thing for me as a kid. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. The world's number one selling home computer is now in a family pack, the Commodore 64. I still remember a lot of things from that computer. I remember certain video games. I remember the first time seeing like Wolfenstein 3D and it just being like, oh my, what the fuck is this? This is like fucking insane. Doom too, like seeing Doom like for the first time and like it just being like mind blowing, like the graphics just seemed so good and it was just like, what the fuck? This is so crazy, like that this is like a thing on like a computer. So I instantly was just like, wow, I really like this object. This object is like super, super cool. Like I want to be doing things with this thing for, for my life. Like I, I instantly got that. The first short films that I made were not VJ clips. They were actually like little short films that I made with my friends. And we would sort of get together and we had like a little Sony handy cam and we would go and we would shoot stuff. And then I, you know, edited it. After a, about a year or two of that, like I realized I was not having fun doing these shoots. I did not like the unpredictability of it. I did not like dealing with actors. I did not like dealing with set locations. I did not like any aspect of shooting things live because I did not have control over it. And so I realized I actually really liked working on the computer because I have complete control over that. I don't need anybody, I can do it all myself, and I can absolutely 100% control the outcome of it. So I stopped making short films like that that were like live action and started doing sort of these more, more and more abstract uh, projects with the computer. I started doing live visuals for like bands in Wisconsin. I would take their album art and I'd sort of, you know, pull it apart and animate it and you know sort of make a bunch of things bands gave zero fucks about it i was sitting over there on my computer with my monitor and everything and they're just kind of like what is that dork doing over there like these were like rock bands and i realized i really like making these clips so what if i just kept making these clips and just gave them away to people that that could be a really sort of like interesting way to kind of like give something back and make these things and if people find them useful awesome like that's great i'm still gonna make them so i might as well just give them away 
This was kind of the first work that I did as sort of like Beeple or whatever, is this like very tightly sort of like synced audio and video stuff where I was like composing all the music. I started releasing them to film festivals and it was just like, Rejection, 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 rejection. I'm sure they just looked at it and was like, what the fuck is this? Okay, next. No, because they were just doing, they wanted narrative stuff, which is fine. But I was paying entry fees to these things. So I was giving them, it was like 50 bucks here, 100 bucks here. It's like, Jesus Christ, I'm paying a bunch of fucking money for people to show my shit. And so with the VJ clips, I'm not paying entry fees and you'll just show my work to a bunch of people? Fuck yeah, let's do this. And so I just started giving those away and then they started becoming very, very popular to where like every Every VJ like you know has heard of me and like used the clip. So a year after I started releasing them, my wife and my brother and I went just on a random vacation to Hong Kong. So we, we walk up to the Hard Rock there and on projected on the outside of the Hard Rock Cafe were the VJ clips. And this is the first time I'd ever seen them. Uh, you know, being used. So this is the like front of the like club or whatever. And it's like, oh my God, there's the clip. What the fuck? It was like, what are the chances of that? Like we're on the other side of the world. And then I like very quickly realized that was not actually that much of a coincidence because people were already using the clips like a lot. Like a month later or whatever, I went to Lollapalooza in Chicago and I was like, oh, there's a clip. There's a clip. There's, <laughs> it's like, oh shit. There are people are using the shit out of these already. Through releasing those clips and having them be very popular. And I've done shows for Justin Bieber and Katy Perry and the last two Super Bowls, the DNC, Childish Gambino. And I've also done concert visuals for Zed and Skrillex and you know, a bunch of different artists. So that's been super, super fun and something like to me that is just really, really interesting, uh, you know, world to sort of play in because it's got very quick timelines that I like. There's not a lot of time to sort of like iterate and sort of like, okay, let's pixel fuck this to death. It's really like, okay, run and gun. We gotta get this out. I have a very unromantic view of creating stuff. I try to look at creating as not being this sort of precious act. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter what it is. We gotta sit down and get it done. You put five in front of me. You know I'm flipping this shit to a 10. So I think if you're somebody who's struggling with creative blocks, I think you should really, really sort of think about, you know, doing an everyday project because it removes being scared of like the blank canvas. And that's an, a, another big part of this, I think is I have very realistic expectations for what you can get done in one day. My expectation is to make a fucking JPEG and put it on the internet, period. I'm Jen Winkleman, I'm Mike's wife. So you've seen the everydays from beginning to end. I have. It's funny because when he started, he was like, I really want to learn how to draw better. So he got a sketchbook and he would just sit down and, and start drawing. And then as he got momentum, he just kept going with it. And, and it's just always been part of our everyday life. The first year I did a, a, a drawing every day. And at the end of that year, I had gotten a lot better at drawing and I saw it really sort of leveled my skills up quite a lot faster than, you know, I had kind of, than it had been before. From there, I had always wanted to learn a 3D program. And I had, I had saw that Cinema 4D was kind of like an easier sort of uh, program to learn. It seemed like it, it kind of had an easier learning curve. So I thought, what if I did a render a day using Cinema 4D and use that kind of everyday structure to teach myself this 3D program. And from there, I really just kept going. Like it, it was, you know, in no way something that I pictured myself doing for, you know, 13 plus years or whatever. And now something that I couldn't imagine not doing at this point. I've had friends ask me that, like, how do you manage, like, being okay with him taking time every day to do that? And from the beginning, he's always been really good about doing it when it makes sense. So if he knew that we had something going on, he'd get up early or he'd stay up late. It was never something that bothered me and it was exciting to see him be so dedicated and, and focused. I feel fortunate to be in a position that I kind of feel like I have to sort of see this through. Prior to about four months ago, I had never sold a print of my work for more than $100. I really feel like the first person who sort of, you know, took a true interest in acquiring my work was Pablo with the first drop that I did.
So this is the guy who just sold it. Bro, bro, what the fuck is up, dude? What the fuck? When did you find out? Well, I mean, uh, I found out, uh, I mean, right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the most important living artist in the world. Jesus Christ, dude, what the fuck? When Mike was like, come upstairs, and we're all running upstairs, and how amazing that everybody was here to be able to go in and then all see it happen at once. It felt like more than just Mike's accomplishment. You know, we're all working together and we're all with him and supporting him. And so to be there and experience that together, it was just, it was a lot. And then I think about myself as a mom and how Dottie must feel. And I'm gonna tear up now because it's, I, I think, to have your kid get the recognition, you know, after all of that hard work, and they've just been so supportive of him for such a long time, even when I'm sure they didn't know what he was doing. You know, we'd go to these coffee shops and they'd be the only ones there, and they were, they loved everything he's done. And so now to see it get to this point where everybody agrees that he's a great artist and, and knowing that there's a lot, a lot ahead for him, um, it was just a very emotional night. One will certainly remember for a long time. Your son just sold a $6.6 .6 million piece of hype. What, what does that feel like? It's just amazing. I mean, it just, these are numbers that just don't, in our lives, don't make sense. And I think the recognition that he's getting, you know, outside the money side of that, is, is pretty cool. I mean, pretty neat. I also think of it as a blessing, and I just wonder what's gonna happen in the future because I think there's a plan here that God has a plan. Seeing my parents here and like, you know, everybody being like literally like, you know, a brother and like everybody was there. I could see how you could think that was stage. But the reason that's actually not that uncommon is because my parents are here quite often. They don't live very far away. And we're all working like this is very much like a family business. It's hard to overstate the change in direction of my career from this and how sort of rapid this has been with this NFT technology. So having them there and being able to share it with them is just like so, so amazing to me. NFTs or non-fungible tokens is gaining momentum. NFT sales quadrupled last year to over $250 million. A popular meme called Nyan Cat just sold for $580,000. The digital age is upon us. It's evolving every single day, and the NFT space is just a part of it. In terms of digital art, I, I think it's there's a couple analogies that I use. One is the Mona Lisa. Anybody can sort of just go up and take a picture of the Mona Lisa. That doesn't mean you own the Mona Lisa. You're not going to be able to convince anybody you own the Mona Lisa. And so that's what the NFT does. Whoever owns the NFT owns that piece of work. I really do believe that it's gonna be like a net positive for everybody, that it's sort of like, it's this new medium. It's kind of like the internet. You can fight against it, but it's gonna fucking happen. So you can either figure out how to use it for good, or you can just like, I don't know, bitch and moan and like get run over by it. We did a clubhouse last night, and there was somebody who said that they did not think this stuff was art. The issue for me, and I think a lot of people like me, is the discipline. Art is alive, it's aware, it's not created on a computer. Digital art seems to lack that awareness of what's happening in the world and in history. Literally like a bunch of my stuff is like pictures of stuff that's happening. One of the things that I think to me is kind of ironic about sort of this tension that I'm sort of sensing between the digital and the traditional art world is I think it's really, I do not think this is an either or. I think it's an and and that's something that, you know, Gary said and I could not agree with more. The world is obsessed with or. This or that. It has to be this or that. I live in the world of and. I think this is a new technology that's agnostic and it can be used by both sides. I think this has pushed me as a digital artist to make physical art, something I never considered doing, but something that I'm super, super excited about. And I think conversely, it's gonna push traditional artists who work in physical medium to do digital stuff and maybe think about how they can bring their work into the digital realm. And I think that's gonna be 
you know, an explosion of, of creativity. And I think there's just gonna be this, you know, amazing sort of cross-pollinization of the two that I think is just gonna be super, super exciting and super just like very much a renaissance in art. Brady announced that he's launching an NFT platform called Autograph. Christie's set to become the first major auction house to sell a purely digital artwork known as an NFT. Now the work is a montage by the artist Mike Winkleman known as Beeple. Being the first digital artist at Christie's is something that I am just super, super like, it's hard to express how like honored I am to, to be in that position because I know like I've been creating this and like uh, for, for 20 years, but I also know an entire community of people has been creating this for 20 years. That community is the people who put me in this position. And so I want to do everything I can to sort of represent them in, in a good light. And, and you know, I, I very much I'm aware that a lot of people, this is gonna be their first sort of, you know, introduction to digital art. And I wanna do everything I can to make sure that they see what I see in it and how amazing this community is. We've always seen him as a creative and, you know, an artist, but now, now everybody is like, he's an artist. I feel like he's kind of always been a step ahead when he was doing his VJ clips and nobody understood what he was doing. So for him to just kind of jump ahead, it's insane. And, and so like, validating for him, I'm sure, to, to feel like, wow, I'm, I've made it. So today's a big day with the uh, Christie's auction happening. It's opening, but it's also gonna last 14 days. This isn't something where it's like starts and it's done in like two hours. This is the start of something that's gonna be two weeks long. The best part of this, honestly, um, is that my entire family will be here um, and the kids will be here and it takes the whole thing down a notch because the kids don't give any fuck about what's going on. And so to me, that really sort of like is calming to me and something that, I don't know, is just very grounding having like the whole family there. What do you think about this world? No, and what do you think about this world? Crazy stuff? Nah. Nah, it's not that crazy. If this goes for a stupid amount of money, I mean, it's already at $1.8 million, so I feel like we're already fairly at the stupid amount of money. But if it goes for a stupid, stupid amount of money, part of that, to be quite honest, will be uh, around the sort of excitement with NFTs, a big part of that because I think a lot of people are looking at these things and seeing the amazing, amazing potential there, um, just like I did. And I think, you know, they see this as a, a huge validation for the space and something that's very much a historic moment for, you know, this technology and sort of digital art. And so, you know, I, I think that will be a big sort of piece of the, the final price of this, this work. So we are in my living room and there are a lot of cameras and crap and we're watching the closing of the auction which closes in an hour and 18 minutes. So what's the feeling in the room? It depends on who you ask. These kids are very engrossed in the iPad. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, good, everybody's happy. It's just kind of everybody's taking it all in. How are you feeling? How are you feeling personally? Uh, good. I'm honestly like not that, I mean, it's already at like a absolutely ridiculous amount. So it's kind of like, I don't see how there could really be any like pressure from here for it to like go up. It's, so it's kind of like, to me, I'm like, good. I'm good. What do you think the final number is going to be? I'm definitely not saying that. I'm not taking that bait. I have a lot of people ask. I don't, it's one of those things where Honestly, it'll go for what it's gonna go. I can't control that part of it, so it is what it is. Hey Mike, this is Jason. Just wanna say congratulations. You're at 25,250,000. It's crazy, man. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? So fucking crazy. Oh my God. Sweet baby Jesus. Wait, 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 just went to 35 million. Shut up. No, my God. Yo! Okay. Oh, my God. Oh my God, thank you to everybody who came out here and just honestly, everybody who has shared my work, commented on it, liked it. Like that's honestly why 
I am in this position right now. Like that's, uh, yeah, I put in the work, but like, and that's where I say that I got very lucky because there's no guarantee that that work is gonna like connect with people. And so that's where I do feel super lucky. Super, super lucky. Just the amount of, yeah. So hurry up. Crying, you got a guy, you guys got fucking Jerry Maguire me, these fucking motherfuckers. Fucking balling like a baby, god damn it, fuck. Oh my god, thank you guys.